Today we're going to be focusing this video on uh, interview questions, interview tips for somebody who is perhaps starting off in IT, somebody that's going in for a interview uh, to get a help desk, a level one, a service desk type of role. Uh, we're gonna go through some of the questions, something that, some things that you might expect, and other things that you may want to be prepared for uh, in preparation for this interview. So it really depends on the organization. If you're gonna go work in a larger, a medium, or a smaller size organization, the interview questions may vary and may be specific to the sort of uh, company or the industry that you're going to be perhaps getting into. Uh, they could be a mixture of behavioral and technical questions. Behavioral questions are the sort of questions that they'll ask you, give me an example of when this happened, how did you deal with that, what would you have done differently, talk to me about your positives, your negatives, what are you good at, what are you not good at. Uh, technical is, not, is more gonna be focused on your technical skills. Given that you're going to be in the IT field, they may want to know where you are at technically. So we're really gonna be talking about um, behavioral and technical sort of as one thing. Um, when I conduct any form of interviews, I generally like to form my technical questions in a behavioral sort of sense. So I won't necessarily ask somebody, what is Active Directory? I will ask the question, can you give me an example of when you last used Active Directory and how it's structured and what encounters, what problems you had? So when I generally like to do interviews, I merge, I guess, the behavioral and the technical questions together into one thing. So rather than sort of asking a point and question in the technical realm, what is AD, what is Active Directory? I will ask the question, when did you last use Active Directory for creating a user in a organization? Give me an example when you had a problem with Active Directory. They're the sort of questions that I'm going to be generally aiming for because it gets uh, a bit more information out of that person, out of, you know, if you're going in for an interview, because I want to know a bit more about your experience, not just if you understand the theory and the knowledge perhaps that you studied somewhere or you got a certificate from something, but I want to know your practical use of that technology in a real life scenario. So a question that I will always ask is what are your top three technical skills and what are your top three skills that you want to get better at or skills that you may not have but you want to improve in. So I'm trying to really gauge here uh, what are you good at? Uh, what are things that you have identified you're not as good at but you want to learn more about? In most IT roles, you're gonna be dealing with some sort of an IT uh, ticketing system. Um, you know, some place that you log calls, you log incidents, you log service requests, it's tracked in one place, and then that way you know uh, what your workload looks like, uh, who's logged a ticket, what sort of issues have been encountered. Um, so I'm going to ask a question around what sort of software have you used for logging tickets? Uh, how do you log tickets? How do you prioritize more important tickets over tickets that are not as a high priority? A question that I find that is very, very telling, and it's good if you have an answer for it, is how do you keep updated in technology? How do you keep up to date with what is going on? Um, technology is changing so quickly. There are new products, new software, new security threats. There's all this stuff that's taking place all the time. There's new hardware from a, you know, from a computer perspective, from a phone perspective, from a tablet. There's new software, there's new vulnerabilities being detected. There's a whole lot of stuff that is happening all the time. And I like to ask somebody, what, uh, what do you do to keep up to date? Um, you know, so I'm going to be thinking about answers around, well, I'm, I'm reviewing daily blogs. I'm, I'm, you know, following certain big vendors, Dell, Microsoft, Apple, to keep up to date. I'm reading their blog pages, their forums, to understand what software, hardware is being released. Um, I'm perhaps listening to podcasts that give me daily uh, tech updates on what has been released every day or every week. Uh, that way I'm always up to date and always fresh. Something else that I find very helpful is having some sort of a lab environment, something that you can have where you are constantly playing with the latest tech. Uh, you can download demos, you can download um, emulators of certain software, certain hardware, where you can play with that in your own lab environment. How do you respond when you don't know the answer? It's gonna be very common where a user out on the floor 
in a company, remote user, whatever it may be, is gonna ask a question, is gonna log a ticket, and you, would, you don't actually know the answer. So having a good response for that is very helpful. Talk about, well look, perhaps I didn't know the answer, but I went and researched it, I escalated it, I spoke to my manager, I spoke to a more senior person in the organization, I did a bit of Googling, I did some certifications, I did something to try to uh, answer that question. Um, the, the best, uh, well I guess the worst answer that you can give to somebody is, I don't know, see you later. A good question would be, look, I don't actually know the answer to that, I will find out for you, and then you'll get back to them. A general question would be, tell me about a time when you had to troubleshoot an issue. Uh, this could be, this is a very open-ended question, and I'm really trying to gauge um, what the issue was, and what their process, their methodology was to actually go and troubleshoot it, fix the issue, communicate with that staff member, and how to get that, you know, that, that issue resolved. Tell me about a time when you had to communicate something technical to a non-technical person. At the end of the day, um, we're gonna be dealing with staff members that are not technical. We are the IT people. We are the person who's been put in charge to look after the IT system, to provide support for the IT systems and to our staff. So a lot of our staff members will not be technical. So knowing how to translate technical tech geek speak, talk into non-technical is very, very helpful. You don't wanna be talking about things like Active Directory and DNS, and I had an issue with this server, when the end user, the staff member, has got no idea what you're talking about. So learning how to change your language is paramount. Give me an example of when you had to deal with a difficult customer. Uh, have some examples of this, very, very telling how you responded to that. Um, customers can be challenging some staff members are more challenging than others so if you've had in you know any areas of conflict uh, or you've had to deal with people who are a little bit more difficult than others learning how you um, approach that is very good good to have a few examples around there if a user calls and says that their computer cannot turn on uh, how do you troubleshoot it um, run me through the troubleshooting steps on how to get that computer working again if a user calls and they say they cannot access the internet, uh, how do you deal with that? How do you answer that? Now, of course, to the end user, the internet may mean anything. It could mean they can't access the network drive. It means they could may not be able to access a piece of software that they normally have. It may be that they can't actually access the internet. So understanding that a user's term for internet may not actually be the internet. So having examples and how to troubleshoot that is helpful. So in a summary, really when I am interviewing somebody who's going for a level one role, uh, somebody who is uh, going for help desk, for service desk, there's various terms that can be used for that sort of level. You're gonna be somebody who is um, generally working from, a, 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 from your desk, you're gonna be on the phone, you're gonna be answering tickets, maybe triaging tickets, so putting tickets into different queues, into level one, level two, level three queues, escalating things to your manager, uh, perhaps doing remote support for people in other offices or working from home offices or things of that nature. How to communicate with staff members of all levels, from basic lower levels to all the way up to uh, your, your directors and your C-levels, your chiefs, in the organization, I think is very important. Communication is the key for a help desk person. So we're not gonna be expecting a level one person to be super technical. Um, but the thing that I'm really looking forward to, lo looking for is for somebody who is passionate about technology. Um, somebody who actually likes to work in IT, somebody who is excited about technology, new things that are coming, how the world is changing, how technology can improve people's lives, those sort of things. So that is my summary. I hope you found it helpful. There's definitely a lot of stuff that we can go into, but they're generally my big, uh, I guess, a summary. If you have, if you have those things in the bag and you and you have examples, good examples for that. Even if you don't have good examples, let's say you're straight out of university or you've studied for this and you don't have those examples, be honest with that person. But if you can give examples around that, um, that would be helpful. But that is it. I hope you found it helpful. I would love it if you subscribe to my channel, click on that little alerts thing so you can be notified of when I release new videos and also like this video as well. And we will see you next time.